My name's Nils Norman, I'm artist, and um, I, am, I have proposed a few different ideas for this project, and we finally came up with a, um, a mural for an area in Genk which connects a, a garden to a park, and this um, motorway bridge kind of acted as a barrier uh, between the two spaces and hopefully this mural and pathway will connect the two spaces up and make it easier to go from one space to another. What I tend to do is I ask people who I'm either been introduced to or I find through my research locally to ask them what kind of problems they have in their area to do in terms of design or infrastructure and from that I usually develop a project that tries to maybe solve that problem or in some way address that problem. And um, so the, the tunnel, the, the motorway tunnel, um, that um, seemed to be a huge problem for that local area because it created such an obstacle between these two spaces. So that became my first focus. Researching the area, we came across the drawings of Leon Becker, and um, who's um, arachnologist and um, he also illustrated um, a lot of his um, research in the area into spiders and but he also illustrated children's books with his drawings of insects so the idea was to actually take Leon Becker's drawings and blow them up into large murals to um, connect a kind of playful element also that was site specific to the area because uh, Leon Becker worked in the area as a landscape painter and to also bring in um, uh, children uh, with these children's illustrations. So it's kind of co trying to combine these three or four things together in these large murals. It's a hand-painted mural um, on either side of the bridge, on either wall of this uh, underground passage of this motorway bridge. The drawings are taken from Liam Bre Becker's engravings, these um, uh, engravings uh, that he made for children's um, a children's illustrated book. They're not uh, direct uh, drawings from his illustrations. I've taken them into Illustrator, redrawn them, and put them in different kind of configurations, the characters, the insects, and then um, put, uh, arranged them to the scale of the wall so that they will be the larger than life insects um, that have um, human characteristics. And there'll also be lighting there and a new path. For, so Because before that, people couldn't actually walk under the motorway and there's a new path to enable people to do that. One of the ideas that came out of this pr process was the design of um, a new playground for the Haim Park and play spaces within the park itself and um, of course those were too ambitious for the, for the final outcome but hopefully they will be developed later on which is something that um, possibly is in, I'm in conversation with with the city of Genk to maybe hopefully realize. The projects themselves aren't utopian, but I use utopia as a critical tool, as a way of revealing sometimes what's, um, what the conditions are of a space. For me, utopia is not really, uh, it's not an end. It's not a, it's not a um, it, the idea is not to create a better place. The idea of utopia is actually to critique what already exists. And for me, that uh, my research into utopia is very much about it as a critical tool. Whenever I can, I try and use this utopian method of critiquing condi con is existing conditions. So I try and implement something within the, a project that questions um, the conditions in which it's in, whether they're economic or urban, uh, or in terms of planning or design. And I try and do that as a way of um, maybe revealing a problem or revealing something that um, possibly could be discussed around that context. Showing in galleries is very at the very bottom of my list of, of uh, places to exhibit, but it's still an interesting place to exhibit. It's just something I don't really take as seriously um, or I enjoy as much as working in the public realm. And um, I just, d depends on the invitation that I'm given or the commission, I, I then develop things in a context-specific way dependent upon where it is and who's invited me and the economics and so on. There's nothing wrong with art per, per se, it's just that I don't think the, the context of a biennial or um, an exhibition has very much of an impact in the terms of decision making and the people who actually make decisions about the, 
particularly the public sphere, they are the engineers and landscape architects and developers. They're not curators or artists. And for me, that's the more interesting dialogue is with those people who actually can change the, the environment in which we live. The knowledge that I gain from working with engineers and policymakers, I can take and um, discuss with those self-organized groups in order to maybe think about other ways of the way the city could work um, for when things actually do begin to change, which I think they will change. Um, if you see what's going on in different cities around the world where people are actually beginning to um, take charge of the way that their cities are being built um, by actually um, um, demonstrating and uh, revolting, I think that if you take that logically to a, f a further conclusion to where maybe Central European and, and Northern European countries start to question their political systems and set up maybe more revolutionary institutions or practices, then I think the knowledge gained from these types of activities will be very useful in terms of thinking about self-organized city design and um, building.